We are smack dab in the middle of another great heavy metal week. But over this past weekend, most were talking about Dark Throne or the Dillinger Escape Plan's new albums. There are reviews for both of those available on this channel, by the way. That perhaps you've missed some of these others that were released over this past weekend. So that's what we're here to expose. Let's expose five recently released albums that definitely demand your attention that you should check out from the heavy metal universe. And we're going to cut straight to the chase with our first selection, which is 40 Watt Sun with Wider Than the Sky. Looking at that title, it's not Welcome to Sky Valley. This isn't a Kiss record. No, instead, this is a little bit of a different melancholy whenever it comes to the world of doom metal. This is one that instead has a very London charm to it. Think of it almost like what would happen if Steven Wilson fronted a doom metal band. That's the best way that I could describe it with one little exception, and that's the fact that these compositions are a little bit tuned down, they're a little bit stripped of a lot. These are not very mobile compositions in any way, shape, or form. These are ones that instead sort of crawl their way like a traditional doom metal band would, only instead they do things with a very light touch as opposed to really having those guitars ring and just hum and have feedback everywhere. This is one that's very stripped down. It's Reminds me a lot of a group such as Morphine from the 1990s, only they're in a doom metal band. Uh, they take a really big risk with their very first track, Stages. 16 minute opener to start off this 6 track, 62 minute affair. But I have to say that the real highlight on this album is Pictures, which has a really nice little fill that you get after some verses. It's just an atmosphere of melancholy that is very pleasant on the ear. Overall, the whole entire album does boost that. The only thing that may hold some folks back is the fact that it is so stripped down and the fact that it is six tracks in 62 minutes, which means that most of the tracks eclipse the 10 minute mark. You definitely have to respect, though, going even more stripped down with a song such as Another Room in nearly 12 minutes. It almost reminds me of an Earth composition, so if you like Earth, you may end up really liking these guys. I do like the clean only singing on this. This is a nice touch. It's something that gives this even greater feeling of melancholy. And if that's what they're going for, they definitely nailed it. Check out 40 Watts Sun. Okay, so our first selection was a little too slow for you. <laughs> I got you, bro. 25 minutes, 20 tracks, worm rot with voices. And damn, this is aggressive, this is bloody, this is... Angry, this is Grind, and Wormrod is a band that ever since their beginnings, which is not all that long ago if you really consider it, they have been doing everything in their power to showcase that they demand to be called Grind Future Royalty. And they may have ascended to the throne with this disc, considering its aggressiveness, considering its just all-out destructive methodology. This is a band that is willing to embrace both sides of the grind and grindcore envelope. They're able to do tracks that are in the two to three minute range, which is long for a grind song, typically. But then they're also willing to embrace the five second song, which they were able to do a couple of times on here. There's one that's eight seconds and dead wrong, and five seconds and still irrelevant. From the very first track all the way to Outward, this is a just ridiculous, ridiculous experience. One that does not take its foot off of the accelerator, and it seems by the time they are done, they're not really done. They just have so much more energy and probably could write five more albums to destroy your face with. Worm Rod is a band that demands your attention if you enjoy this style of music, so chances are, if you do, you haven't missed it yet. But just in case you did, you better scope out Voices by Worm Rod, or else you'll regret it. Let's return back to the world of fuzzed out heavy metal and fuzzed out rock with Red Fang and Only Ghosts. Now, this is Red Fang's fourth full length release, which means you can no longer talk about the freshman freshies or the sophomore slump, the junior jitters. No, instead, this should be the senior success, right? Well, Murder the Mountains a really hard album to top. It's a very solid release. Really, Red Fang hasn't missed yet. And this is a disc that doesn't feel like that they've missed, but they just didn't fully captivate on or, uh, or capture the momentum that their previous releases uh, have really 
been able to accomplish. Maybe it's just the fault of we sort of know what's coming, or maybe it's the fault of just having fun. This is an album that sounds like the guys just went into the studio and wrote what they felt and wrote to have a little bit of that fun. And it definitely shows as some of these tracks don't feel maybe as masterful as some of those earlier crafts, but still has a great atmosphere and a terrific flow to it. Take a look at how the first half of this disc has a little bit more of a variety of, of lengths. You know, that alone kind of gives you a little bit of uh, an indication of a strange but also intriguing track order. The second part of this disc has a lot more expansiveness. The five and the six minute long cuts are ones that are showing up a little bit more here. However, the funny thing is, is that Living in Lie, the six minute finale, is not really the highlight of this album. Instead, you need to look at some of those shorter tracks such as Cut It Short, either that or Shadows in order to discover that. Uh, the Smell of the Sound is another very good offering at track number seven. And I just love the fact that this band is able to use both its pacing and also just its kind of natural chill to its advantage. And these guys are fantastic live, so if you've not gotten that experience and one is coming up for you, take the risk. It's worth it. It's a lot of fun. It's what got me into the band. Definitely check out Only Ghosts if you're a fan of Red Fang, but also check them out if you're a fan of fuzzed out stoner rock, stoner metal. These guys never fail to this. Ancients with Voice of the Void. Uh, this would have been the surprise of the week, and we'd be hearing an air horn right now, but this isn't that big of a surprise. Uh, the debut by these guys was also quite excellent. However, this is a progressive extreme metal band that is just applying elements of extreme metal to the progressive sound, and it's one thing to, you know, kind of have that be a calculated portion, but these guys throw it in whenever it's necessary. They mainly stick to a real aggressive style of progressive metal, which is kind of a nice touch. It's something that where, uh, you know, progressive metal just as that simple of a genre title is kind of rare. Name like five bands that are within that construct, and four of them are probably wrong. Uh, this is an aggressive album from the start with Following the Voice, and it's, you get some of those progressive tendencies right out of the get-go. And at times, this album sounds a little bit rugged. It sounds like it's not very well polished, but it's almost by design as you start to learn as the composition continues onward. Uh, the strong uh, vocals that you get are certainly from that extreme metal perspective as the weak side is actually the cleans, and you hear the cleans a lot more often, and you might think that that's going to be a real distraction, but whenever I say weak, I mean just within this band, you know, this is still strong stuff from an overall perspective. It's one that drives with a little bit of power, but has that shakiness there, that sort of unwavering notion to almost showcase a little bit of emotion, showcase a bit of themology, and showcase a little bit of fear, perhaps, of what's being spoken about, because there is a lot of cool stuff inside of these lyrics. Really like Buried in Sand, which is the near 11 minute long second cut off of this disc. And I also love this decision. I love the fact that they go with that and then they go with their second longest track, or at least tied for it, at 9 minutes 57 seconds with Worshipper. This is a long album. This is nine tracks and there is, like I said, two tracks that are nearly 10 minutes. There's one that eclipses it but it keeps you guessing at every turn. The riffs are very solid, very well designed. Everything feels like it fits, and really, everything feels like it flows together. I can remember during playback two or three, still wondering if I had reached the split between two songs, and whenever I looked, I realized I'd reached it about four minutes ago. This is an album that feels like it was made to run the way in which it is run. That's probably why it was designed this way. This is a great album, and you should certainly scope it out. This kind of gives me some joy here at the end. B-Bong. B-Bong. <laughs> their self-titled album, their first release. This is a user submission. This is one of our own that has released this. Uh, so I want to give a big shout-out to uh, Mackenzie Tucker. This is great work. This is a stoner doom metal band from Tennessee. And this is their first full-length release, as I mentioned, and it's pretty awesome. It's fuzzed out. It still has a lot of that sort of, you know, early stages of being a band recording quality to it, which is certainly one of its sort of strengths in this case, considering it does present a very stripped-down effect. It almost makes me think that, you know, if bees made metal, they wouldn't have, you know, the loudness wars. So it kind of makes sense. 
would bees be patient enough to play stone or doom metal is another question altogether. But I love how honey oil definitely is just saturated with Black Sabbath that it is also intermixed with just fantastic death vocals. It reminds me a lot of uh, some of the parts in Agalock and in the Shadow of Our Pale Companion, the rougher vocal portions of that song. I don't know why it has sort of that tint and register to me, but if you listen to Honey Oil, which is the first cut, there's a YouTube link for you to scope this out, by the way, ladies and gents. I recommend that you do it. You'll kind of know what I mean whenever you hear it. It has that same gruff and rugged exterior to it. But then going into the title cut has a little bit more of an aggressive side to it, and I, I just love how the themology keeps on going. This is one of those... Uh, appreciation points that I have with some bands that are willing to take things to the appropriate level. We have Reproduction Sickness, which has nothing to do with bees, unless you want to talk about the Queen. We have the Weed Smoking Bee Blues, which is pretty awesome. Uh, Mac is very well versed in different styles, so you have some... a little bit it, it is infused in there. You know, they don't stray very far from their Stone or Doom. You have Anthrax Honey Blend. No, it doesn't sound like an Anthrax song. If that was what you were going for. You did a good job of not plagiarizing. The bee's knees and all of his weed needs, which <laughs> at this point in time, I'm just smiling from ear to ear. And then Buzz finishes this one off. I love the fuzzed out riffs. I love the Sabbath influence that then takes things one step further. Tony Iommi would be proud. I'm proud of you guys. Do me a favor. If you check out anything from these five, check out Bee Bomb. Leave them some honest critique over on their YouTube page. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I just said it. Uh, five recently released albums that you should check out. You should do that right now. Don't wait. I'm Cover Killer Nation. If you're excited about something that's coming this weekend, uh, the same weekend as the marathon fundraising stream and for Corn, Serenity of Suffering, and Riverside, I have the son of... I forgot. Damn it. Fuck. My eye itches. Ah. I'll talk to you later, folks.